Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We begin tonight with breaking news. The Hennepin County Medical Examiner has released the autopsy report for a six-month-old Owen Skoji. The autopsy report shows Skoji died of blunt force head trauma, and this is now being treated as a homicide case. Skoji was an infant who was rushed to the hospital on June 1st after he was found not breathing at a West Fargo daycare. He died a day later, and his family kept baby Owen on life support so his organs could be donated to other children. The press release today from Hennepin County says the Fargo Police Department is now assisting West Fargo in this investigation. Just because he's gay does not give anybody the right to beat him up. You know, so, I mean, once you have kids, if you don't have kids now, once you do have kids, you'll understand. The father of a man who says he was assaulted at a UND fraternity has a message to share. He's disappointed in the community. Formal activities are on hold at Lambda Chi Alpha Fraternity in Grand Forks after police started investigating an attack last weekend. Today, we talked with the father of the man who says he was stripped of his clothes and beaten because he's openly gay. The father says they aren't blaming the fraternity. They're saying that they hate that these hate crimes do happen more often than anyone wants to admit. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson has this exclusive story. It doesn't matter if you're gay, straight, black, white, yellow. It's wrong. Dan Gisvold. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Treat them with respect. Says growing up, his son was and still is harassed for being openly gay. Now four guys jump you, strip you of your clothes and your dignity, and then whip you with a belt like an animal and kick you. If that's not a hate crime, I don't know what a hate crime is. While some people were shocked to hear about an attack, Gisvold calls a hate crime. He says it shouldn't be surprising. And you're going to run across people who are homophobic everywhere you go, unfortunately. Standing up for his son, but also others out there who have been discriminated against for any reason. Unless you're in my position or other parents' position that have a son or daughter that's gay or lesbian, I mean, you don't really quite get it. And they want to be treated just the same. He wants to thank the Good Samaritans out there. He says helped his son. But at least there are some good people around that campus that night who are willing to step up. And also bring to light a bigger issue, saying more people need to stand up for one another. Physically, Gisvold says his son has recovered. But emotionally, he says the fight isn't over yet. No, what do I want to see happen? I'm a parent. You don't want to know. What I want to see happen to him. So, and I think any parent that had in the same situation probably wouldn't share what they wanted to have see happen to these kids. Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. Gisbold says they plan to press charges against those responsible, hoping that it's a hate crime charge, which he says is difficult to do in North Dakota because the state does not have a specific hate crime law. Well, neighbors of the fraternity say they're shocked to hear about what allegedly happened last weekend. Jerry Seba and his wife live next to the Lambakai Alpha fraternity, and they've been there for nearly 40 years, and say the fraternity members have been great neighbors. Seba says he didn't hear much that night that the alleged assault happened. They say the fraternity has parties, but they're not typically loud or rowdy. He describes the frat brothers as helpful. They've always been great neighbors. They, uh, if we need help with any moving anything, in fact, they when I had two trees taken down between here and there, they paid part of the cost of taking the trees down. To hear more from Seba about the night of the incident and what the fraternity told him earlier that day, click on this story on valleynewslive.com. It is hot, hot, hot out there today. Many places are in the 90s. In some areas, like Fargo, it got up to feeling like 100 degrees today. Whew, what a way to start September. Let's go to meteorologist Robert Hahn for a first look at this hot weather. Robert? Yeah, certainly hot, especially along and west of the Red River, where we've got temperatures in the low and even mid-90s. Those are your air temperatures. Heat index values right around 100 to 102 in many of these locations. Off to the east, just a touch cooler, but still on the warm side with some 80s. 
upper 80s in many cases over in Minnesota. Satellite, mostly sunny skies, but we have seen a few clouds popping on up and underneath those clouds, some very small showers. Not going to help you cool down much. About the only thing it's going to do is add just a touch more humidity to the air where these very brief showers continue to move off towards the northeast. Could see an uh, isolated storm late tonight up in the Devil's Lake Base and a better chance for storms across more of the region as we head through the day tomorrow. As we take a look at the Fargo area planner as we head through the evening, it's going to be dry here. It's going to be hot. It's going to be breezy. Temperatures dropping down into the low 80s by 9 o'clock. A warm night tonight. And then that chance for storms as we head into the Labor Day weekend. We'll detail that chance for storms and who has a risk for severe weather coming up in just a few minutes. It's warm, though, right now. That's for sure. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. A man is behind bars for kidnapping and aggravated assault after officers responded to a medical assist call at Nativity Church. When officers arrived, they discovered a victim who had been burned and assaulted. After further investigation, officers found probable cause to arrest this man, 31-year-old Alberto Hewler. Now, the vic he and the victim were associated with the same criminal street gang. Officers believe the incident happened after the victim violated criminal street gang expectations. She waited until the outcome was clear. Today, U.S. Senator Heidi Heitkamp says she supports the joint comprehensive plan of action negotiated between the U.S., Iran, and five other countries to halt Iran's nuclear program. Heitkamp's announcement comes a day after President Obama secured enough votes in the Senate to preserve the nuclear deal. The senator said her decision on the policy is about seeking diplomacy rather than conflict. The state health department is reporting that a person has tested positive for West Nile virus in Grand Forks County. The North Dakota Department of Health has a map. Here it is. It shows areas affected by West Nile. The green indicates positive human cases. The blue is positive mosquito pools and the orange is positive human cases and mosquito pools. We have a link to the map on valleynewslive.com. All you have to do is click on this story. Grand Forks is highlighted in orange. Now as a result, Grand Forks and East Grand Forks, they're going to be spraying for mosquitoes tonight. It's set to start at 8.30, goes through 1 a.m. People are advised to take precautions to avoid being bitten. It's moving day for members of Fargo Cass Public Health. The city bought the former Sunmart building on 13th Avenue South. They remodeled it and finished its transformation and it, its now offices. Director Ruth Bachmeyer says her department has been scattered in five or six different spots around the city. Some of the 150 or so staff will stay where they are, but for most, it's moving day. It's exciting to all be in one location. Um, we're learning a lot as we all move into one location together about, well, we didn't used to do it that way in our building. So we're working through those things, but in the long run, it'll be great for the public and it'll be great for our staff. All the public health offices are expected to open for business in the new location on Tuesday. The convenience of cooking in your home could be made a little bit easier with a few new spiffy appliances. JW Kitchens in South Fargo is now open. It specializes in some pretty amazing new technology. One appliance, the Speed Cook Oven, can serve as both an oven and microwave. It has settings for food like pizza and cinnamon rolls. The store will also do demos and let customers try the appliances before they buy it. It's nice for people to be able to come in and experience all that so they kind of know what they're getting and they can get excited about it and really love their kitchen when they get it all done. For more on JW Kitchens, go to valleynewslive.com and look for this story under the Valley Today tab. We're forecasting a pretty sad, bittersweet day tomorrow as we say goodbye to our favorite morning meteorologist. The Valley Today's Mick Care is retiring from television after nearly 27 years with us at Valley News Live. Now, as we prepare for his last day tomorrow, we pulled out some great pictures from over the years. Take a look at this. Mick has delivered thousands and thousands of weather forecasts, filed more farm reports than anyone else, and has shared endless laughs with all of us. Tomorrow is Mick's last day. So be sure to watch us on Valley News Live at noon to say goodbye and good luck. A Moorhead woman is $21,000 richer after getting lucky with a Minnesota State Lottery scratch-off ticket. 
Sarah Croesus of Moorhead won the money by playing the lottery's 24 karat crossword scratch game. The winning ticket was purchased at Casey's General Store at 3400 12th Avenue South in Moorhead. Still ahead, watch out if you have these snack nuts. They could make you seriously ill. We're going to bring you the details. We've had a mostly quiet and hot day today. Some big storms firing off to our west. That's a sign of things to come as we head through the holiday weekend. Your forecast details on the weekend coming up right after this.